we've seen of late that a lot of Indian origin economic leaders are taking over multinational companies. We see them in newspapers and uh, like magazines like Time, Newsweek, Business World. How do you feel about this uh, success of Indian economic leaders? No doubt this is something which is very encouraging. But as you know, India is a large country. We have a large population. And one of the biggest investments that we made when India became independent was in the field of education. We set up at that time the Indian Institutes of Technology. We set up institutions like the All India Institute of Medical Sciences and other medical training institutions. We set up the Indian Institutes of Management. And I think that all of these have brought about a qualitative change in the Indian youth. And it has made the Indian youth more confident, more globalized, more ambitious, and able to be a responsible global citizen. So when we hear about Indians taking over as CEO of, say, Citibank or as CEO of Pe PepsiCo or any of the other um, large multinational corporations, I think it is a perfectly natural development. India is also a country with a lot of economic contrasts. Recently, the Oscar award-winning movie Slumdog Millionaire has portray portrayed this uh, very artistically. What does the future hold for economically marginalized society of India? India is a very large country and naturally there are disparities in Indian society. India in some ways is also a young country because after all we only became independent in 1947. When we embarked on this exercise of making India into a democracy with an economic development, it has taken us a long time to harness the resources that we have in India, both in terms of manpower and material resources. Now that we have embarked on a certain rate of economic growth, there is no doubt that the poverty levels have also come down. That is why people today talk of the large Indian middle class, which ranges anywhere from 300 to 500 million people and is one of the largest middle classes anywhere in the world. With the kind of economic growth rates that we have and with proper social policies, I have no doubt that we will be able to eliminate poverty. We will be able to eliminate the kind of extreme deprivation and we will be able to ensure that there is social justice for those sections of society which have so far been underprivileged. The newly elect American President Obama said that he also wanted to watch the movie Slumdog Millionaire. During the Bush administration, India and USA relationship really got strengthened. What does President Barack Obama's victory mean to India? The India-US relationship has actually grown in strength with the end of the Cold War and it has moved forward in different ways. We saw a lot of opening take place during the Clinton administration. Then we also saw more strengthening of the relationship during the Bush administration. And I have no doubt that with the Obama administration coming into place in Washington, we will see a further strengthening between the two countries. The reason is that the India-US relationship is driven today by the interaction between two large democracies, two large plural societies, two societies that actually want to let their people be free, let them exercise their imagination, and let them give them space so that they can achieve their ambitions. And these are two countries, therefore, that feel that in that context, there is a lot of give and take. Don't forget there are two million Indian Americans who hold very high positions in the corporate sector, in the education field, and now also there are some like Bobby Jindal who is considered to be one of the youngest governors and he belongs to the Republican Party. Similarly, there are other Indian Americans who are uh, in the Democratic Party and who are involved in policy making work. So I have no doubt that we will see this relationship become stronger during the Obama administration. 
Your Excellency will continue with our conversation after a short break. Do stay with us. Welcome back to Power Talks with Santosh sir. We are in conversation with His Excellency, Mr. Rakesh Sood, the Ambassador of India to Nepal. Your Excellency, you took your office last year after the Constitution Assembly elections and saw the formation of the Constitution Assembly. How do you envision India's role in this historical transitional phase of Nepal? As you know, India and Nepal have shared a very close relationship. It is a relationship and that is born out of historical ties, of geographical linkages, of cultural and religious linkages. In short, it is a relationship like a relationship between families, a relationship that is driven by the people to people. I think it is a great opportunity for India and for me personally to be here to see this historic transformation that is taking place in Nepal. And I have no doubt that it will make Nepal stronger, more prosperous, more stable, and an important partner in this region and with India. Do you see the peace process of Nepal completing in the next few months and the new constitution being written? Well, the peace process is something that is the conclusion of which is absolutely important for Nepal. Earlier it was said that it would be completed within six months. That has not happened. We have actually seen the deadline extended. And now the Prime Minister of Nepal, he has said that it will be completed by June or July 2009. India has supported the peace process and we would be certainly ready to help in ensuring that the peace process is brought to a logical conclusion as early as possible. Regarding the constitution, there is a deadline that the constitution should be completed by the middle of 2010, a deadline that can be extended by the constituent assembly by a period of six months. Progress in the Constituent Assembly was somewhat slow to begin with, but now with different committees having been formed, with the members of the Constituent Assembly having travelled and having got the views of the people of Nepal, and now I hope that this process can be accelerated so that a new constitution can be developed. How has your stay in Nepal been so far? Have you had time to travel out of Kathmandu? Or does Kathmandu keep you very busy? Well, Kathmandu has a tendency of keeping one busy, but uh, I have enjoyed my travels out of Kathmandu. I have been to in the north to Pokhara, to Jomsom and beyond. And I have been in the Tarai. We have a consulate in Birganj. We have a camp office in Biratnagar, which was set up after the breach in the Kosi embankment. I have also been to Jhapa and Ilam and uh, I hope to be able to travel before I complete my tenure here. I hope that I will be able to travel to all the 75 districts of this country 